hello class uh, today i will give you a brief video on IV infusion i hope it doesn't go over 10 minutes some of the important concept in case of IV infusion you mm, already know about what is c max and c min but in case of IV intermittent IV infusion it is something different and uh, we have a new term called c trough and c peak in intermittent IV infusion so you have to understand what is c trough and c peak how they are different from c max and c min and this is the equation this is the same equation for first order and this is a very easy equation uh, i think the calculation of uh, intermittent IV infusion uh, is easier than multiple dosing but there are some tricks if you know this yeah it's very easy otherwise it is going to be hard so first also you have to know the medication water which is 24 hour clock i guess everybody knows what is 24 hour clock but in america it is not very common the 24 hour clock i think in europe and rest of the world they use 24 hour clock so uh, and know how to find the time for c trough and c peak so first what is intermittent iv infusion intermittent iv infusion is that uh, you have an infusion you start and then you give for 30 minutes and then you stop and then again you give another infusion at the dose after the end of the dosing interval so maybe you are infusing for 30 minutes there is no infusion for rest of the dosing interval uh, and then you infuse again here in 30 minutes so that's why it's called intermittent these are short infusion no, unlike continuous IV infusion this is a short, short infusion that's why it's called intermittent IV infusion that means you infuse for 30 minutes and then you stop and then again you infuse at the end of the dosing interval some of the drugs which are uh, used uh, administered as intermittent IV infusion are this aminoglycoside vancomycin and uh, these drugs are administered for a number of reasons allow distribution of the drug uh, throughout the tissue and also uh, these drugs are very toxic so for this reason intermittent infusion allows to monitor the drug concentration throughout the time of administration but as these are very theoretical thing I will uh, go uh, I will give you more detail during the class let's go to the, the difficult concepts first uh, you have to look into this curve carefully in case of my intermittent IV infusion if you start infusion for example from here then you and then you infuse for like say for 30 minutes and here you stop infusion stop when your infusion is stop if you stop the infusion you will have the maximum concentration this concentration is called c max then you wait for example after the, in this case six hour you had when it concentration goes to to c mean you administer another dose so be, before you administer second dose the concentration will be minimum this is called c mean so it may, you have to think about uh, this is a mountain this is you can call it top of the mountain top and bottom so here in this you, this call we will call c max but and this one will call c but in case of intermediate iv infusion the sample we take blood sample it is not c max or c min we take in between it is here 
summer. This is called peak concentration. A little after you stop the infusion. Little after you stop the infusion and then citraph is a little before you start the second dose or another dose. So you see this CPIC and uh, this you can call CP and this is CTRAF. So they are different from uh, CMAX and CIMIC. CPIC is just little after the maximum concentration arrives and CTRAF is just little before CIMIC arrives. So this is how what is written here, CMAX arrive when you stop a short infusion and plasma concentration reaches maximum. CMIN arrives when you start the infusion, another infusion. And in case of intermittent infusion, we do not use CMAX and CMIN to calculate K. To calculate K, we use this concentration. And that's why all the complexity comes from usually drug concentration sometime after you stop the infusion and trough concentration sometime before you give the next dose so always you have to remember infusion you are starting infusion drug concentration goes up and here you stop there will be maximum concentration here that is C max and then it goes down at the end of the dosing interval you will have your C min when C min comes you administer another dose for 30 minutes and C trough will be just little after you stop the infusion little after you stop the infusion here and little before you start the another dose so this would be you see pick and this would be your C min. So if we understand this uh, C min, C peak and C min, then now we have to figure out how to find out the time. Okay. One, if you look into this uh, figure, in re in theory, we should what we should do. For example, if you start my uh, infusion at seven thirty. 7 30 that means it's am infused for 30 minutes so that means uh, you infuse for 30 minutes and peak sample uh, you collect 30 minutes after you stop the infusion so at 8 30 so what my you are doing is in in theory it should be like that you have started at 7 30 you infuse for 30 minutes and then you wait for 30 minutes at 8 30 you collect the sample in case of trough sample you wait at trough sample you wait for eight hours and then you collect sample at it is 15 30 that means 3 30 p.m this should be like that everything should be done in one single dosing interval here dosing interval first dose start at 7 30 and another dose you give at 3 30 so this is the ideal situation but as you can imagine if you administer this drug at 7 30 you have to wait for eight hours to collect the sample so what for the convenience for convenience of nurse pharmacist what they do they do not uh, collect sample at this time instead of collecting sample at this time here the trough sample you collect uh, you collect trough sample uh, just little 30 minutes before you start this infusion trough sample you collect at 3 p.m. just 30 minutes before starting your IV infusion and you infuse infusion start at 3 30 
you start the infusion at 330 and infuse for 30 minutes so that means it would be 4 pm and peak sample you collect 30 minutes after you stop the infusion it would be 430 that means you are going to the patient you are going to the patient you take the sample and infuse and then after 30 minutes again you take samples so this would be you pick sample again let's go back so this is what is done in case of uh, intermittent IV infusion always you have to remember so this is the ideal situation we don't uh, do this thing in we don't do these things so in practice for the convenience nurse or whoever collecting sample they will go to take sample just 30 minutes uh, sometime before the you start the infusion in this case for example the dosing interval ends at 3.30 p.m. This dosing interval ends at 3.30 p.m. 3.30 p.m. Instead um, of taking sample at 3.30 p.m., what would nurse go do? They will go to the patient at 3, 3 p.m. and will collect sample. And then collect sample 30 minutes before the infusion. So um, uh, it's in enough time to collect sample. And then infusion you start at 3.30. Infusion you start at 3.30 p.m. and infuse for 30 minutes. So this will be, will be 4 p.m. So after 4 p.m. you start infusion for 30 minutes. So pick sample collection and then you collect sample at 4.30 this is what is done so to do that as you can see this uh, sample is collected from in one dosing interval and this sample is collected in another dosing interval but we cannot uh, use this timing for calculation of k so here for convenience we collect the trap and peak samples at two different dosing intervals we collect trough sample at the end of a dosing interval is here and administer the next dose and we then collect sample just after stopping the infusion so when you see here in case of this you have collected sample here this falls in the fourth dose and this is in the fifth dose so, but we cannot use this time because if you collect uh, collect sample and this is time for the fourth dose and this is the time uh, which uh, the collection time is in the fifth dose. So, we cannot use this. So, the, for this reason, we have to adjust the timing. So, we have to either assume, okay, let's, this dose was collected here or if we don't want to do that, we assume that this dose was collected here. So let's go back to the real example. Here. So in except for medication administration, so you see the gentamicin, it was administered 80 milligram every eight hour. So you see here the start time. Always it is giving the start time 7:30, 3:30. And this is my 11:30. So my, all, all the problem will come with this my 24-hour clock. In this case, you my, you take the sample. Samples collected during the same dosing interval. You see here, sample. You start the dose at 7:30, administer the drug for 30 minutes, it will be 8, and then you collect sample at 8:30, and then. Uh, before the dosing interval ends, this is the dosing interval. This is the dosing interval. Before the dosing interval end, you you take sample at three. So this would be your trough sample. This would be uh, if you 
collect the sample at the same dosing interval but if you collect the sample in two different dosing interval at steady state you see here we are collecting sample at 3 here collecting sample at 3 pm for this would be your trough sample c trough and here uh, we are collecting sample again at 4.30 you see 4.30 this falls in another dosing interval so that's where the complication comes we, so for this reason we have to find out the difference between C trough minus T trough minus T peak so we have to find out the what is the difference. So to do that, there are several options. So first, what we can you do, we can use the time for peak trough, peak and trough for the next previous or next dose. One option, as I've mentioned here. Although in reality, you have taken a trough sample here, you just do an assumption that no it was taken in that fifth dose so in this way they are in the same dosing interval or if you don't want to do that you assume peak sample was taken on the fourth dose always it has to be the same dosing interval you cannot use this time and that time so for this reason you have you have to use there are several options you can do so one of them is this here use trough time of the next dosing interval here uh, what i'm saying that you, although in reality you have uh, you have used this you have collected a sample at this time but you just use the trough time at the next dose so the next dose is fifth dose for this reason you have to add eight hours see here you just add you are in in real life the sampling was at your sampling you have done at 1500 hours that means as three you have done collect a sample at three so but you are assuming drug sample was collected on the fifth dose for this reason a you add eight hours that means it will be 23 hour 23 hour that means it was 11 11 pm so and here you see this 11 pm t trough you convert it to 23 minus 16.5 this will give you time this is how you calculate if you so in one way you push as you push the trough sampling time to the next dose okay another option is move the peak sampling time to the previous dose here in this case although although in real time you took the sample at this time which is man 16 ma, which was 4 30 although it, it is 4 30 which is mass 16 30 but you are assuming no i i have taken the sample just one dose earlier so in this case you just subtract eight hours because you are going backward here then in this calculation you use 15 t trough is 15 hour 15 uh, means 3 pm and then uh, if you subtract this it is going to be 8.5 830 so here 15 minus 8 so this is going to be your the difference between t trough and tp or another option is 
Another option is use the elapsed time between dosing interval start time and sampling time. Here, if you look into this, you use the elapsed time during between the dosing interval start time and elapsed time. So here, the if you have taken sample at so here you taken the sample at. 15 hour and dosing interval started at 7.30. So this time elapsed between the dosing interval start time and sampling time is 7.5 hour. Here in this case, uh, sample taken at uh, 4.30 and dosing interval started a little and one hour early. So you use this time point. So that's why it is saying time elapsed between dosing interval start time and sampling time. So overall, there are three, uh, one last thing is this transformation of data is only valid at steady state, not other cases. And every time in all three cases, whatever you do, the difference between t -traf and TP is going to be safe. They are not going to change. So uh, there are three options. Whatever you choose is fine. Uh, uh, it's fine. You can do the calculation easily with whatever you choose. Uh, so first one, let's go back again. Use peak time of the previous dosing interval. Oh, blah, blah, blah. First one. In the, if you uh, use the trough time of the next dosing interval, in this case, if you carefully, it sounds complex, but not really. If you, uh, so in this case, you are pushing your trough time to another dosing interval. For this reason, you are delaying the dosing interval from real dosing interval. For this reason, you add 8 hours because you are moving it to next dosing interval. But in case of, if you use that previous dosing interval for peak time, use the peak time of the previous dosing interval. In this case, you subtract the dosing interval time. Fine, if in this case you see here, you have, I have moved back so for, uh, to the fourth dose. Or, Another option, you just always use this, that dosing interval start time and sampling time. Dosing interval start time and sampling time. Always you have to remember what is the dosing interval. In the medication water, these are dosing interval. You see, it is every eight hours. And you, you know, this would be your first dose and this would be your second dose. So. Theoretically, uh, you, you should take sampling between this time, but for convenience, we don't do that. So I think this helps. Uh, I think this is going to help you, but uh, always you remember, again, peak time, there are three methods. One is, use the, uh, So use the uh, time for peak and trough of the previous or next dose. In this case, if you use the use the trough time of the next dose, you have to add the dosing interval time. So for image here, you have more to eight hours. You just add eight hours. So for this reason, in the med real medication water. You see the medication water, uh, the sample was taken at this sample was taken as 15 hour and six, 16, 30 hours. This is the sample has taken and you can easily see this is the peak one because it's a higher concentration. This is the C trough one. So if you want to, if sample is taken at two different time points, here the, this is the fourth dose. And then peak sample you have taken in the 
fifth toes for this reason either you push this forward or push this time backward in case of forward a forward you have to add the time in case of backward if you use this one if you manipulate this one then you subtract in this case if you want to for push this time forward you have to add eight hours if you push this backward you have to subtract it out in this way you figure out the difference between t tough and tp always whatever you do for you to confirm always you should check if are they same it has to be same otherwise you are making some mistake and also you have to uh, be careful how to calculate those differences at 7 30 3 30 11 30 okay this is pm this is pm pm and these are m and all the problems will come like this this all this finally to review now what will be possible question what are the advantage of intermediate IV fusion you have to know that peak and trough this is peak and trough how c max and c min are different from c peak and c trough c max is in fact real c max that means when concentration goes becomes maximum c min is also uh, the real concentration when the concentration is minimum which equation to use same equation same equation like mm, what we use for first order equation how would you read 24 hour clock 24 hour clock go check is zero time is zero zero is start from 12 in our case 12 a.m and then it goes to here yeah, it would be it starts from 0 1 2 3 and then 23.39 or this could be call also 24 hours 24 hours okay and then uh, find the time for my c trough and c peak always you have to remember for example this c trough is 15 hour sorry uh, c, this is c trough time and c peak time would be 1630 so if you want to if you move this forward you have to add eight hours here if you want to push this backward you have to subtract it another option is just uh, use the difference understand the medication order what understand the medication order is this is here 80 milligram every eight hour and infusion over 130 min so infusion over 30 minutes so what would be the infusion rate here any clue i'll give you one minute what would be the infusion rate you are administering 80 milligram for 30 minutes so Infusion rate will be 160 milligram per hour. And here, this is the time, start time for the infusion. And uh, always, this is the sampling time. This is not start time. This is sampling time when you see concentration is low concentration. This is time for C trap. And this is time for C peak. Or you can say it is. T truck and T pick. So all this I have uh, a funny video for you. I can uh, show you. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see what this guy did. 